G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now in this video I'm going to continue on from last time where we made all these nice yellow funnels and vents and um, I'm going to have a look at what we can do to improve those wood decks. So let's get started with that. Now I want to work on these wood decks and although the um, veneer is quite nice it's just sort of too subtle. If you look really close you know you can see the variation but even then it's just big long pieces of grain. So what I've done in the past is I've, I've put a, um, a wash over it and that's that's worked well. But I'd like to try something a little bit different this time and I've been experimenting and I've come up with this. What do you think of that little bit of deck? Now this one gets hidden it's got a uh, another deck on top of it so um, I, I'd actually been trying out some effects on some spare veneer and then I tested my ideas out and I made that. I'll um, show it a bit closer. So that's a little bit of um, wood deck there and I've managed to uh, give some of the planks a slightly different colour. I've probably gone a bit too heavy. Sorry for the wobbling. Here we go. I need two hands to steady my wobbly hands. I've probably gone a bit too heavy but um, as I said, that, that piece of deck does get covered up by so much stuff that most of it won't be seen. So it was a good one just to try my experiments out on, finally on this veneer, see how it looked. But some of the more subtle areas, such as um, along here, they're, um, I'm much happier with those. Some of these darker planks, I think I need to be a lot more sparingly with the darker planks. And after some suggestions, I'll probably only do dark planks maybe around some superstructure things or around some deck mountings so that it's just more like an area that uh, would have acquired a bit more staining um, but then use the subtler colours that I have there uh, overall on the deck just to break up the uniformity and although I've had arguments said that the deck um, wood would have all been picked from you know one forest and all been exactly the same well in reality and from my experience of looking at many ships wood decks and I have been on quite a number of ships in my time warships and civilian ships the the decking over the years tends to change color and and different cuts and different pieces tend to weather or basically leach the oils out of them differently so I, I want to do this sort of thing where they are all slightly different all right then how did I achieve that effect well I used a number of my Washes. I've got a light brown panel line wash. I've got this one which is actually rust, but my experiment showed that um, it produced quite a nice effect. So I've used that. I've got a dark brown wash as well. This one's from um, MIG, but I've also got a panel line dark brown as well from uh, Tamiya. And um, a little bit of thinner. I'm just using Tamiya's X20 thinner which is the one that I find least offensive to my nose, it also dries nice and quickly. And then at the end of all that, what I found is even though things were looking good, they were a little bit too cartoonish, I've used some life colour, liquid pigments, and this is dried salt. And that tended to tie all the, um, all the different stains together and give me a more washed out appearance. And so that's, um, that's what I'm gonna do. Two coats of this at the end seems to be the trick. So those are all the bits and pieces we need for this. Uh, let's go about staining this little piece of aft deck here and see how it comes up. I'll be using a double zero brush here. This is one of my old Humbrot brushes, which um, were my favorite brushes for detail painting until I got those lovely Sable ones from SMS. More about those another day. But anyhow, this is a nice fine brush and I love the, the grip on it. The, um, the tri grip really really helps me. So we'll start with the lightest colour I've got, which is that one. So shaking that up, now normally you can use the applicator, but that's far too thick. These these planks are so thin. I found what I needed to do was um, just dip in and get a little bit on the brush. So let's do a few, and I'll do them. I know it looks really dark. Sometimes I'll paint a couple together. Be sure I splodged over a bit. Now don't worry 
that I'm not exactly in the panel lines. That's not a huge issue. I mean, it'd be better if I was. It's a bit of scoring there, which does sort of help, but... Um, it'll all come out in the end, believe me. very dark doesn't it? Oh, I'm bumping all over the place today. I think my hands were a lot steady yesterday. Okay that's probably another one over here and another plank there. Got more colours to go so I won't get too carried away. All right so let's put the lid on that. That looks like a big mess doesn't it? Okay here's the trick. We're now going to go with a big brush, a nice big flat brush, and I already have some very light, very, very diluted of the um, light brown with some uh, oh, Tamiya. They can't talk on things at the same time. Yeah, it's a very light thing now. Because this stuff does dry quickly, I found the trick was to do this pretty well straight away. Just blend these out. Try and wash them out a bit. We are going to have that um, salt over the top, so that does help. But the blending process now, this is one of my experiments. So I did quite a bit of, I spent a whole day experimenting and messing around with lots of planks and um, well my own, I'm, I planked up I marked up a whole little section okay so that's let's wash that out a bit let's move to our rust color and back to my fine brush let's see if I can be a bit more accurate Probably working in too large an area because I know all my tests were on tiny little areas. Oops, there's a big splodge. Okay, no problem at all. Cotton bud to the rescue. Anyhow, we're going for a random look here, so that's the whole principle of what I'm trying to do. The reason I've used enamel wash instead of maybe doing this with acrylics or somebody suggested pastels and you know yeah it's all very well but um, this I want to soak in and then I want to be able to work with it and the past experience has shown me that um, the enamel wash really is a trick okay so there's a number of those so again we'll go to my um, my thin wash, well my thinners, dirty thinners. I found the dirty thinners work better than putting the clear thinners on because it also started to add. So that washes that one out. I've continued on and I've added all the other colours and um, started to get this effect. Now it's it's looking fairly dark at the moment, I know, because if you compare it to the other one, you know, that looks a lot more bleached. But that's the whole trick of the salt. So yeah, it sort of gets a bit scary at this point. You think, oh, well, it's sort of a nice effect, but yeah, it's really dark. And I don't know why my light brown went on looking so dark, unless I hadn't washed my brush completely from last night and I still had dark brown enamel on my uh, brush uh, when I tried to attempt to put the light brown on but um, I basically didn't go with too many of the dark colors because of 
the first one going on so dark. But I've got an effect there. I'll just have to um, double check I clean my brush <laughs> when I go back to doing the lighter colours. But these are all things you learn. It doesn't matter anyway. It's, it's an effect. I'm getting there. Right, we'll let that dry. We'll come back in a few, uh, well, five minutes. That's about all it's going to need. It's dry to the touch already, just about. But I'll give that five or ten minutes, go have a cup of coffee, and we'll come back and we'll add the salt. Well, good news is that's all dry, but the thinners, unfortunately, seems to have melted my glue. And um, <laughs> the whole side's not joining as well. Uh, maybe if I ever did this again, I'd um, do the staining when the parts were off <laughs> before I actually added them to the hull. That might be the trick to it. So um, the amount of thinner that I'm using is um, melted glue. And that happens. You've got to be very careful when you're slapping thinner on your kits because um, it will dissolve glue. But anyhow, I can um, put, the, put the funnel in some Tamiya Thin in that and basically rubber band it up overnight. Anyhow, enough of that. What we need to do now is we need to get that looking a little less stark, or a little less obtuse. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just too much. So we're going to put some dried salt on. Now this is uh, Life Color Liquid Pigments. If you've seen my other videos, I've used these before. They're just a uh, water-based acrylic pigment. They're terrific. You just use them straight out of the jar. They, um, they come up well. Now this one, as it says, is salt. You need to give these things quite a good shake because they um, pigments do fall to the bottom. Now you put it on and it looks as thick as all hell. You think, oh no, that is going to ruin my model. Do you watch what happens as it dries? All right, so I have literally slathered that on. Nice and even. All right, so there it is. Oh dear, my whole deck's gone white. Yes. Let's see what happens as we time lapse. Now this is only oh, three or four minutes later. As you see already, it's pretty well disappeared. Still sits on some of the dark things, like plastic. So you can um, work them on off. You can actually remove this um, stuff you know, hours, sometimes even days later. There's a remover in the kit. It's unusual for an acrylic wash. Normally you put them on and they're stuck. But not these liquid pigments. So they've, um, they have a remover a solution, which I think is just isopropyl. But um, anyway, you can see already that's faded. It's not as, um, as bright white as it was before. Still not quite as dull as I had the... Um, Little top deck piece here. So we're going to put another layer on. I mean, you think when you put the first one on, you think, ah, oh, it's going to be so white. No, it isn't. So I'll put another layer of the um, the life color liquid pigment on. And again, it just seems so horrible when you're putting it on. You think, oh, that is going to look dreadful. But no, it doesn't. These pigments work different ways. Some of them you use sparingly, but I found with this, like the salt, it, um, at least over wood veneer, it does show up a bit more on plastic, but over the wood veneer, it just soaks right in. So there we go, another coat. Move that out close to see what I'm doing. Another coat, and it's absolutely white, isn't it? Looks dreadful, all right? I'll again let that sit for about three or four minutes and we'll come back and there it is it's already bleached out it probably could do with even maybe another layer of the um of the salt wash but i'll leave it for now because um it, it does tend to sort of mellow out and change like most things give it a bit more time to dry so we'll see how we go i certainly like the effect that i had on this section uh, this one's slightly different, but then again, decks do weather differently, so we'll see. You can always add more of the salt, that's not a problem. But I'll leave that there for now, so you can see that's how the, the effect um, worked. Oh, I'll turn that fan off too. Sorry about that. Had to have the fan on when I was um, doing all this, obviously, to help with the drying. So I'll work on through the rest of the, um, the model, get all the, um, the other decks done, and I'll have to uh, be very careful how much thinner I use. Uh, 
Make sure it doesn't drip down the uh, edges and loosen the glue. Oh well, there you go. Lesson learned. <laughs> Working on the four deck today, and I've been a bit more subtle with my approach. What I have done is those, um, this one, the what's supposedly the light brown that went on so dark. What I did with it is this time I dipped the brush in the brown and then I dipped it in the thinners and then applied it and it ran nicely and it was nowhere near as dark. I also worked in smaller um, areas. I did only like, you know, a few centimetres or maybe an inch. And then again, and worked my way along. And um, that, that worked a lot better. I was getting the same sort of result that I got on that tiny little piece. The, um, there it is. This one where I got more, this lighter bleached effect. So I'm, I'm much happier with the effect I'm getting here on the on the um, the front of the ship, and that's okay. I mean, ships change and weather differently in different sections. So um, I'll keep going with this because it um, it's getting me an effect that I really like at the moment. That's prior to the um, life color salty wash. Where is it? Salt. There you go. Dried salt. So I haven't even put the dried salt on yet, and I'm pretty happy with what I've got. I might even get away with only one layer of the dried salt here. We'll see. But if this, um, this comes up a treat, which I hope it will, then I will stick with that method for the, um, the midships and, and all the upper decks. And it'll, it'll all come together. So anyhow, that's the progress report. I'll keep going and hopefully I'll have this all done so you can see the full effect shortly. So I've worked ahead and I have all of the little deck pieces stained now and I've done a little bit of dry fit. See how they look. I even put in the little boat. Um, cradle here in this little walkway just over the top so I get a feel for how it was all going. Now I'd, um, I'd kept it light here up at the bow and I'd really like that there's only the odd dark blank showing and then in the middle areas in midships here I um, also kept it light but then I slowly darkened it up towards the stern and especially the top pieces because my logic there is that the funnels which will be here the um, the smokestacks will belch out belch belch blow Blow and belch, belch. They will belch out smoke and soot that will stain the rear decks more than they would the front of the ship. Yeah, that's my excuse for the stern being a little bit darker. And I think it's sort of an interesting effect to at least have different shading along the ship, not an absolute uniform. And then that's what I was after. I wanted to break up the fact that the, um, the wood veneer, as pretty as it was, it was just too, you know, absolutely one colour. The um, variation even in the grain wasn't enough wasn't enough for something as small. So uh, next thing to do is to add the dried salt. So let's give that a good shake. And I'll now proceed to add that to all the pieces. salt is now all along that deck. It's even started drying here at the bow already and um, I think that's going to tone in very nicely with the stern because um, as, as you remember I had two layers of the salt on the stern. I've only put one here. We'll see how we go. Because it's been a lot lighter I think I only need that, that one layer and, and it's drying. It's quite warm here today. It's 25 degrees whatever that is in your particular vernacular but that's a nice warm autumn day for us. And um, I had the fan on while I was doing this. And that's that's nearly dry. But I'm going to leave this completely while I go and have some lunch. And um, I need to do a bit of touching up and get some, uh, get the odd rain spot off here. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. I can have rain splodges on my guns. Um, I always come and touch those up with the, um, the cleaner, the little remover. That'll allow me to go back and um, touch up in little areas like that. I've overspray. Be careful not to go inside the stairwells because I'd let the um, dark brown stain fall in there and they made those stairs really stick out. Very happy with those. 
But overall, I'm really happy with this effect, and um, I think that's that's pretty well going to be it. In fact, let's do us do a quick little test. I know it's still drying, but you know, can't help myself. Just um, pop in my little uh, deck here. It's just very very rough fit. There we go. Um, so that's all you're really going to see. It's going to be this midships area gets masked a lot. So that's that's um, that's looking quite fine. So we'll see how we go. I don't want to overdo this with the salt because um, I only put the extra second layer on at the stern because I had fairly dark planks. But, um, we'll see how this tones in. I may need to put a little bit of extra here just to blend it into the stern. But that will be broken up by the um, little, little stern superstructure here. See how we go. Sort of a bit of a touch and play. Happy with the bow. I don't think I need to do much more with that bow. I'm very happy with how that how that's looking. All right, well, um, enough waffling on about my salt, Harry. I'm getting hungry, aren't I? Yes. Yes, glucose levels are down. <laughs> All right, I'll um, leave this now to fully dry, and then we'll come back and I'll do the final mock-up with all the funnels, see how she looks. Well, here she is. Yes, the Vayak. Look at her. She's really starting to take shape now. She looks like a cruiser. So all we're really missing is, um, you know, masts and uh, a few little bits and pieces and all the lifeboats. Um, that's a bit of on the minor, the minor artillery, the guns I've got along the side there. Little bits and bobs, that's about all that's going to happen now. Lots of little fiddly things. And then, of course, things like the railings, which take some time. That's probably a video in itself. But for a week's work, because it was a week ago, I started putting this together and I've managed to do two videos. Um, one on the yellow funnels and vents, and this video on just staying the deck, which were big jobs in themselves. But I'm really pleased that's all done. I'm so happy with the look now I have for this deck. It still retained the lightness. I mean, I didn't want to go too dark. It's starting to get dark down on the stern. But for the majority of the ship, the look and the colour is exactly what I wanted. And we'll just call the stern a little bit uh, soot and smoke damaged. So that's it. I've got some um, weathering to do yet. I'll um, probably do a whole lot of that in one hit and you know, add a little bit of panel wash and um, a little bit of weathering to my funnels and my vents. Uh, but basically, for the purpose of this video, the wood deck's done, the funnels and the vents are finished. Oh, she's looking good. I'm pretty happy. I'm really pleased with the result. So there you go. That's it for this video. Uh, I'll, um, as I said, it'll be fiddly stuff from now on. Who knows what I'll do next. <laughs> It'll either be um, railings or um, guns or something. I don't know. Who knows? I'll stop waffling. Goodness me. But I am really chuffed at the look that I'm achieving. And this model has been really quite a joy to build. There really has been little that is very difficult. Sure, the, the funnels needed a bit of sanding and scraping. And I just gave an excuse to show you some very old tricks. I mean, I know it's stuff a lot of you already know. And one smart-ass guy made a comment that I was teaching everyone to suck eggs. Well, mate, you can suck whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah, a lot of us know those tricks. A lot of us don't. And a lot of us need reminding. It doesn't matter. I'm just showing you my model. That's all this channel is about. And if you enjoy that, terrific. Keep watching. Keep listening to the waffle. <laughs> okay, that's the VAG. That's as far as we got. That'll be it for this video. So it's goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Udini.